So today we have with us Ariel Singh. She is a former U.S. table tennis Olympian and a current senior in economics at Princeton. So thank you so much for being with us today, Ariel. Thanks so much for having me. Um, so just wanted to start with some of your background. Mm -hmm. So you know, where are you from, and what are you up to right now? Sure. So I'm from San Jose, California. Um, grew up there. I started playing table tennis when I was seven years old, and it was a huge part of my life. I played for ten years. I'm very fortunate to have made it to the Olympics when I was sixteen, and now I'm currently at Princeton. Like you said, economics um, major, computer science minor, and just really enjoying my time here. So what are your long-term plans now that you're a senior and about mm -hmm. to graduate? Um, I think my goal in life is just to become, find something that I'm really passionate about and try to become the best I can be at it. Um, not necessarily best in that field, but maybe just to the best of my own potential and always mm -hmm. competing with myself. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I think, as a senior, I'm trying to figure out what exactly that path is and um, what it is I'm truly passionate about, and hopefully I can follow that. So why did you decide to major in economics? I started taking economics classes in high school and I was really passionate about it. I really wanted to learn more. i um, very fortunate to have attended some Berkshire Hathaway meetings when I was younger. And so that kind of got me interested in, in business. And so mm -hmm. I definitely carried that passion coming into college mm -hmm. and started taking more economics courses and realized that I thought it was some pretty interesting stuff and it really spoke to me, um, which is why I'm here today. Very cool. So we're going to move to a little bit about um, your college application mm -hmm. process. So tell me uh, about what that was like for you. Okay. So I think ever since I was eight or nine, I wanted to attend Stanford University. Mm. Yeah, I applied <laughs> early. I um, really wanted to get in. Um, my like counselor thought that I had a really good chance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, didn't get in. I'm here today, but I think it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, I originally made one application to Stanford and then waited until I got rejected mm -hmm. and then applied everywhere else. And I, I truly think it was the best thing that could have happened to me because um, I never would have thought that I would come to the East Coast, never would have thought of even applying to Princeton. Mm -hmm. And I made so many friends. Princeton's opened so many doors for me. Mm -hmm. And it's just been absolutely incredible. And so one advice I I would give to high school students is just to not really worry about it too much because life always works out in really mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what do you wish you had known when you first started that process? Mm -hmm. In high school, I wish I would have known to research more into schools. Um, I kind of had this idea of Stanford in my head, but I really didn't know anything about it. And so I would go and research a lot of schools and see what you're really passionate about, see what really speaks to you. Um, and also, I think just during the process, try not to get too stressed about it. I, you know, that's obviously really difficult, um, but I think it would help me a lot if mm -hmm. I just realized that things tend to work out and mm -hmm. you really have no control over it and just to, mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you balance athletics and academics in high school and even now in college? My first two years, I attended a kind of different school, so I would go to a teacher once a week to take tests and turn in homework, and then I kind of realized that in order to attend a a better college, I would probably need to start taking AP classes mm -hmm. and actually attend, um, I guess, like a regular school. So I started doing that my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. um, and my junior year, I remember I would come in really early in the morning and um, leave at like noon at lunchtime wow. to go and train. I would train at train in the afternoon, at night, and then go back home, do homework, and then kind of repeat the next day. Wow. So how much effort went into your training? especially for the Olympics. Right. I used to train three, four hours a day, six days a week, mm -hmm. um, potentially six hours a day on Saturdays and Sundays. Wow. So it was definitely a huge part of my life, but yeah. I really loved it, and I think that's the most important thing. I found something that I really loved and I really mm -hmm. liked working towards. Mm -hmm. And what were some of, not necessarily related to just athletics, but in general, like failures or setbacks? I know you talked about Stanford, mm -hmm. but other than that, that you feel like you really learned from? One kind of setback I had was when I first attended Princeton, I knew that everyone I talked to, or I knew that coming in, that everyone was going to be extremely smart, mm -hmm. but I think I was pretty taken aback by how outgoing and how like exceptional everyone was. Um, so definitely my first year, I was feeling um, pretty low confidence. I didn't feel like I belonged here. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt like I couldn't compete with everyone else. They were so much smarter than I was. Mm -hmm. And so that was really hard for me to kind of um, overcome. And eventually I just realized that you know, while I was training table tennis and trying to balance schoolwork, a lot of these people, they had dedicated their whole lives to something else that they were passionate about, and which is why they're so amazing in that. And so I, instead, I try to use that to like kind of fuel me and to make me realize that I have to also put in the hours in academics to kind of catch up and hopefully do well. So I know one thing you said that you want to do is 
figure out what you're passionate mm -hmm. about. So what are some things that you're doing right now to try to figure that out? As a senior, one of the biggest things is trying to get a full-time job after you graduate. And so I really tried to apply to things I felt that kind of suited my interests. I attend a lot of information sessions. I attend meetings of career services and basically ask them um, what are some potential paths. I called up my mentors and asked them, um, what do you think I should do with my life? And I think the advice was just find something that you're really passionate about. And that might not necessarily be your first job. Your first job might most likely will not be where you end up after you know 20 30 years where you actually kind of settle down in your career and so I think knowing that and knowing that your life path always changes and you know things technically always not things most likely always work out and um, sometimes you just really can't predict what's gonna happen in 10 years I think that was really comforting mm -hmm. there was not that you know real sense of urgency that I need to, right now to know what I want to do Tell me more about your mentors. Mm -hmm. So who are they? How did you gain mentors in the first place? And what role okay. have they played in your life? So my first mentor is um, Kimberly Query. So she runs a hedge fund in Florida. I met her at a Brookshire Hathaway meeting. And she is absolutely amazing. Um, she's very much about women helping women. And so when I talked to her about what I want to do with my career or what, um, how school is going, she's always been very helpful in helping me figure out what that is. She's obviously much more experienced than I am, and so she has a lot of life wisdom to share with me, which I really appreciate. Um, I have another mentor that I call Auntie Sharon, and she's been absolutely amazing too. Um, ever since I was like little, she's always been there for me, and I think um, just kind of talking to her, she's really inspiring in the sense that um, she's also like a strong, independent woman, and mm -hmm. I think she's definitely taught me um, to just figure out what it is that I love. And even if I have setbacks, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're good things sometimes. So for high school students who are looking for mentors mm -hmm. right now in whatever area of their life, how do you uh, recommend they go about doing that? I think kind of striking up a mentorship, it's kind of two parts. One part is just kind of um, putting yourself out there and uh, maybe either reaching out to someone, um, trying to get a meal with them or get a coffee with them, or just have some time to sit down and talk to them and ask them about their experiences. So I think that part's um, kind of taking the initiative. But the second part is just really natural connection. You can't really force someone to be your mentor if they don't want to be. So just making sure you really connect with them. And I think things that um, when you talk to someone, even if you know you want a person A to be your mentor, maybe they're not suited for it, and then person B might come along, and you have to kind of take the initiative for that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you put yourself in situations where you would meet people mm -hmm. that could mentor you. Um, how did you do that? Like, how did you find someone at Berkshire Hathaway, for example? I think it's just been very lucky. Um, through Berkshire Hathaway, I got to meet a lot of really interesting and amazing individuals. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's just been really lucky since I started going when I was nine and so how, I, how did you start going? I started attending my first Berkshire Hack meeting when I was nine years old. Um, I was very lucky because through table tennis I got to meet Warren Buffett. Um, he had a 75th birthday party and they wanted someone to play table tennis and so <laughs> I just happened to be that little girl and through that I started attending his meetings, um, his annual meetings and it's been an absolutely incredible and humbling experience and to just be able to meet all these people who are truly accomplished and also really down to earth has been really inspiring and definitely what I want to become hopefully in the future. What's a common denominator you found across all the really successful people that you've met? Hmm. I think every successful person that I've met, um, a few different things. One, they all worked really hard, extremely hard, um, and two, um, every single time I ask them for advice, one of the things that they've said is just to find something that I really love doing because the path for everyone is not the same. And I think the third thing that I find most inspiring is that everyone I've met who's been really successful has been really humble. And I think that's absolutely refreshing, just that they can remain so down to earth when they're doing so well. So for you, what do you think is the secret to your success? when you were younger and even up till now? A huge part of it has just been hard work. Um, and I think that I work hard because um, I'm very thankful for where 
of where I am today and all the opportunities I've had. So I think one thing I do is that when I wake up in the morning, I think of three things that I'm really thankful for. And it kind of puts me in the right mindset of just realizing how lucky of a position I am. Um, you know, I got to pursue something that I really love doing. And obviously not everyone gets to do that. I have a roof over my head. I have water. Um, I have, you know, I got to go to school. And so all these amazing things um, kind of worked out for me and I'm here today. And so I think that I just really need to use all of my potential and just work hard, try to become the best that I can be. Mm -hmm. And how did you develop that work ethic or how do you even now stay focused and productive? I mean, obviously working hard is not always a fun thing. Sometimes you have to work hard on things that you're not, um, you don't particularly enjoy, I guess, but I try to think of it in the grand scheme of things. Even if I'm doing, let's say, a homework problem, it might not be completely relevant to me, but I hope that, you know, one day um, I can use that little little kernel of knowledge in some way, and so hopefully it'll make me become a better person. And so I think try to keep in the grand scheme of things, um, think a little big picture. Sometimes it's easy to get tripped up on the small things, and yeah. What are some values and principles that you live by? So I think one thing that I've learned from table tennis that I still really think about today is that um, it's about the process, not the results. And um, it kind of developed through table tennis because sometimes you can work really hard. You can put in the hours, you can put in the effort, you've tried your best. And just sometimes in a match, things just don't go your way. Things that you can't control um, and you might not end up winning the match. And I think that even if you lose a match, it's better to reward the hard work and the effort that you put Put in and it's really the um the process that matters as opposed to the, the actual outcome. And I think that this is something that I think about a lot in college too. Well, there's job applications, I can try and prepare so many interviews, but at the end of the day, I might not get it. Maybe someone else did better than me. Maybe my, I just didn't click my interviewer. Um, you know, all these things kind of happen. Same thing for school. I can try really hard and work hard, but sometimes the test will have a question that I just didn't study or I can't really think of at the moment. And um, to kind of just reward yourself for working hard and trying your best. I found that very, it resonates a lot with me. Um, how do you deal with it when you lose? When you've worked your butt off for like six months and you just lose a match? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely happened to me before. Um, you know, I've lost in national championships and that's obviously very heartbreaking. You'd work an entire year for it um, and then all of a sudden to go and lose. Um, but I think the most important thing is um, obviously after you lose, you might feel sad, but to really pick yourself up, um, think of all the good things that you did, think of how much you've grown since that time. Um, for example, well, obviously one year is a long time. I obviously improved. Um, you know, I became a different person, it feels like. So, and also just reward yourself for that hard work. Obviously easier, easier said than done. And then kind of having to go back and rewatch the match is obviously very heartbreaking. I kind of realized that once again, um, I would tell myself it's just table tennis. Um, you know, in 30 years, I might not even remember playing that match or I might not even remember um, all these things. And I think in the moment you can get so sucked up in this, you know, vortex of just bad thoughts and to just really take a step back and realize that, you know, it's not the end of the world at all. And there's so much more to life than a table tennis match. So did you come into college knowing that you, what you wanted to do, or did you come in undecided? I definitely came into college undecided. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually picked Princeton because of their table tennis team. And I mean, where I am today right now, I definitely don't play as much table tennis as I did before. So even the reason why I chose college has changed now. And what I do on campus has definitely changed. So even, even from that, it's been different. And um, I came in economics actually, but along the way, it, hasn't always been smooth sailing. I've definitely thought about other majors. I think it's important to kind of explore all your interests and then realize what it is that you want to do and to, mm -hmm. I, I think it's like a healthy part of growing. <laughs> what do you think the purpose of college was for you? And like, what do you wish you had thought about that question as a high schooler? So I think college for me was really coming out of my shell and getting to try different things. I didn't really have a normal high school experience. I didn't, I never got to hang out with friends, didn't have a cell phone, didn't have a Facebook, um, didn't go out, didn't go to the movies. I didn't do anything basically except table tennis and school and sleep and eat. Um, and I think coming to college and just getting to hear everyone's stories and um, getting to make really great friends, I think that's the most important thing. And I think that is something that is the thing that I value the most from college. And I think as a high school student, um, 
something I would have told myself is just um, I think coming into college I really wanted to make connections but sometimes I felt like you know if I talk to this person for like 10 minutes um, it's not really gonna mean anything because we won't become like good friends or whatever um, and so just why bother making the effort and why bother putting yourself out there and I think um, one of my friends gave me really good advice and she said that um, 10 years down the line you're what you really want out of college is to go back and think of all the good memories and all the friends that you had and even though necessarily at that 10 years from now you're not talking to that person anymore if you kind of go back in time and think that you know at one time I had that really deep conversation with them or one time we got a meal together and it's all those small things that kind of add up. Do you think that that, that kind of dedication was what you needed to have the kind of success that you experienced or what do you go back and do differently? So obviously my high school experience was a little bit different, um, wasn't always pleasant, but I think if I had to go back in time, I would definitely do it the same way. Um, because even though it was a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, it was for something that I really loved and I was really passionate about. And I hope that you know, 10 years from now, I can find something again that I'm really passionate about and hopefully I'd be able to, willing, be willing to work just as hard again. Amazing, thank yeah, you so thanks. much, Ariel. Thanks so much for having me.